Hey guys, I hope all of you doing great. Recently, as you might have noticed, here we have started sharing basic gardening videos. It's a series of videos. So today I thought I'll pick up 10 very commonly asked questions and address them here in this video. Let's dive in. I just realized this is the first time I am doing question and answer session. So let's start with a very popular one because yellowing and dying plants, I keep talking about them, but here is a unique one. Can we use unused tea powder for indoor ornamental plants like Aglonema? So I will divide this question into two parts. First is unused tea powder and used tea powder. Unused tea powder, sure you can use it because essentially it is dried leaves, right? So it is organic matter. The second part is where I want to talk at length. See, you can use used tea powder. The only thing is that you should wash out the sugar because if you do not wash out the sugar or milk component that is mixed with tea, then that will attract microbes and may, may lead to root rot. You don't want that to happen. So if you want to use your daily used tea, you can definitely add it to your plants in the soil. The only thing is wash it with water and then add it. Next question. Could you also let us know what shape of ceramic pots to use, use specifically the need for flat ones with low depth? Yes, so I in fact have the ceramic pot here. It has not too much of depth. See, any pot you can use, terracotta, ceramic, metal. The main, main thing is that it should have a drainage hole. I think I am repeating myself here. This is the nth number of time I have told that drainage hole is really important. Apart from that, material does not really matter. You can use any. As for the depth, it is actually a very good question because not a lot of people bother about it. But see, the depth of the pot depends on the size of the plant above the ground. For example, this is about, I would say, 7 to 8 inch deep length. For example, this one is about 7 to 8 inch in length. I would not put this plant in this size of pot. This is too big. But if you, for example, are growing succulents, they can be grown in this size of the pot. So the size of the plant determines what size of pot you're going to grow in. My Monstera is dying. Okay, so I will generalize this question. And the reason we picked up this question is because I want to give a general checklist that you need to know whenever your plant is dying. Okay, so I had this peace lily here. You can see it is quite in a sad state. So if you are declaring that it's dying, here are a bunch of things that you need to do. First, inspect your plant closely. If it's yellowing or browning, there are two to three things that might be going wrong. First is watering. If they are dry and crunchy like this, that means that probably your plant is underwatered if the leaves are yellow but soggy, then that means that it is overwatered. The second problem with yellowing leaves, if you think that watering is completely fine, you are very sure you've been doing it right, then watch out for sunlight. If there's too much of sunlight, if it's too much of hot heat, then your plant will again start burning. You don't want that to happen. So make sure that you know what kind of plant needs what kind of sunlight. Peace lily or most indoor plants that I have here, indoor plants, you know that there's nothing indoor and outdoor. It depends where you can provide the necessary requirements for a plant. So these plants, for example, they like medium light. This room has medium light. They will not burn here. But anything below this will also kill the plant because they will not have enough light to grow or to make their own food anything beyond this let's say if it's harsh sun that will also kill the plant they will start to burn so in short one line answer for this question is see closely what might be going wrong with your plant if it's yellowing it is water or sunlight now if these two are definitely right you're sure i'm not doing anything wrong here then lift the leaves and see does it have any kind of infection or insects in that case you will have to Use neem oil spray, it works wonderfully for all kinds of plants. Okay, next question. Could you please share some indoor plant names that absorb moisture from air that act as dehumidifier? Also some plants that purify air. Fiddle leaf fig. It is one plant that thrives in moisture. So it's a great dehumidifier, I would say technically speaking. But the only thing is that 
if you're keeping it in a moist space it should also get a lot of sunlight else it will start to die and fungus will start to grow on the plant next i am facing issues with my tulsi i can find black edges on the leaves of tulsi plant please tell me why and what is the solution i am staying in a cold weather place okay so let's discuss tulsi like generally first of all i know that in winters tulsi becomes vulnerable to insects you would see these black insects coming on tulsi it is completely okay ideally i would say that use some sort of a fungicide pesticide whenever your plant is infected but in case of tulsi because we use it in our kitchen i would say it's okay just ignore winters plants become vulnerable to insects it's okay as the seasons change as springs come spring comes in your plant will recover from this problem as for the black edges this applies for all kinds of plant if there are black edges or brown edges there is something wrong with the watering figure out that either you're watering too much or too less if it's black and dry i would say that you're probably most likely under watering the plant tulsi for example here in mumbai it's kept in my terrace i water it every single day just before the sun comes up so before 11 or 12 noon i would water all my plants because during the day the stress from the sunlight the hot sun is too much on the plant so i tend to water my plant just before the sun comes up should we water the leaves while watering the plant if yes how often i've also seen that we need to clean the leaves with lemon kindly let me know how to do it for maintaining the leaves or if you have any video please help me with the link first of all as for watering the plant see the plant absorbs water from the soil and not from the leaves so when you are asking me how to water the plant i would say water the soil don't care about the leaves but the reason people spray water on the leaves is to remove the dust it is good to clean the leaves now you can also just spray water on them and if in case there are salt deposits like in rubber plant and rubber leaves i've seen that these white spots come up in that case you can use lemon water to clean them when people are keeping plants indoors in their house they prefer to keep them perfectly green and looking at the best if they're outdoors nobody cares so it is like a personal choice if you're keeping plants indoors of course it's nice to look at the shiny leaves but there's no rule or there's no like basic requirement for your plants to wash them with lemon water next question is how to care for a rubber plant how can you make a bonsai out of it as for the rubber plant care it is a tropical plant it does really well in our country only thing is that ensure it's getting enough of sunlight but it's not too harsh to burn the leaves else the second thing i would say is just water whenever the soil seems dry if it's not sticking to your finger just add water as for the question on bonsai see i think for bonsai there are lots of other ficus species that do well as bonsai for example banyan tree looks beautiful as a bonsai I'm not sure if rubber tree bonsai will be a great looking bonsai. It is a personal choice. Theoretically speaking, you can make a bonsai out of it because bonsai is essentially a miniature form of a tree which is aesthetically trimmed over time to make it look like a landscape such as this. So the decision is up to you. If you want, you can make a bonsai out of rubber plant but i would say there are lots of other species that would look better and would require less of hard work because i think bonsai is also the game of patience you need a lot of patience and you have to continuously trim the plant to make it look in a certain way good luck with that by the way okay is zz plant poisonous i have read it on google okay the reason i added this question here is that similar question comes for lots of other kind of indoor plants as well that so and so plant i read is poisonous is it okay to have that plant see when somebody says that this po- this plant is poisonous they are essentially referring to the point that if somebody consumes this plant then it is poisonous with that logic money plant is poisonous probably peace lily is also poisonous but in case you don't have children and pets just merely keeping that plant will not make it poisonous if you have children and pets somebody who can actually pluck it out and can eat it i would say keep 
pet safe or children safe plants else you can grow any kind of plant just merely placing that plant in your house does not make it poisonous okay few days back i tried propagating zz plant in water i dipped one half inch of plant stem in glass of water changed water every four to five days i do play i placed it in shade area seems like you did everything right but it looks like it's not a good idea share your zz plant propagation experience in water comment below and let me know the success rate okay so see most plants you can grow from cutting when it comes to indoor plants this plant you know i keep talking about it money plant it does very well from cuttings philodendrons here also do really well from cuttings but if you look closely at them these are plants that have aerial roots coming out so this kind of helps the plant to have higher success rate with cuttings but when it comes to zz plant it does not have aerial roots theoretically speaking zz plant can be grown from a cutting by just snipping the stem and putting it water but also this makes the plant more vulnerable to root rot or to general fungal growth you may not have very high success rate in that case what i prefer actually with zz plant is that take the plant out and remove the stem this way and now the stem since it has some roots coming out this can be placed in a new pot so this is essentially a pup that we have separated the same method i use with aloe vera the same method i use with most kinds of palms but when it comes to uh, plants that have aerial roots i just take cuttings and put them in water with the rest of the indoor plants i actually separate the pups which has some roots and then i plant it i hope this helps i have always had a problem with areca palm white bugs what to do okay white bugs if they are cottony white bugs most likely they are mealybugs it's completely normal to have mealybugs on areca palm i know it is not okay to normalize insects on your plants but uh, don't be scared you can just wash them off as a precaution you can also use neem oil spray generally there are two things that make your plants vulnerable to these mealybugs first is infrequent or irregular watering for example if for few weeks you're watering every single day and then you suddenly stop watering for a week this irregularity also makes your plant vulnerable to insects or diseases secondly we've also seen that plants that do not get enough water become weak and they become vulnerable to insect attack now another thing that i do with my plants is i actually don't do that too much but i should be doing it more is that make sure your plants are kept in a well ventilated space often what we do especially people like me who stay in an apartment i don't have a luxury of huge space so i tend to put them all together and that makes them vulnerable to insect attack ideally they they should not be touching each other they should be separate from each other the ventilation the air circulation will help and this will significantly decrease the occurrence of insects any kind of insect okay so let's take a last question uh, it's a bonus question because i see a lot of curiosity around it it's not really related to gardening but i know there are lots of students and kids who watch our videos which is quite surprising to me i never knew that there are kids out there watching our videos so for them i'm going to address this question please make a video on your qualification what courses did you take up and also from which colleges etc first of all i want to say that what we study in school or college things are changing so quickly these days that by the time you become a part of workforce they become sort of irrelevant so my education was very different from the kind of things that i'm doing it definitely set up foundation for what i'm doing in life but then i had to take up a lot of skills that were not taught in school or college to me so here is more details on my education i have done bachelor's in life sciences from miranda house delhi university then i did masters in environmental science from forest research institute dehradun and this is what actually changed the course of my life because i got to do a lot of field work across the country from rajaji national park in himalayas to chamoli which is a district in himalaya we worked with farmers there to uh, mudumalai tiger reserve 
uh, which was part of my PhD field work. I did my PhD in ecology from Indian Institute of Science and this is where I picked up the fundamentals and the basics of plant science, the basics of natural ecosystem which actually I try to bring in in our videos. In fact, just a plug-in. We have recently started a new category of content which is called Beyond Garden which is not just about gardening but about plants, the science of plants. So we try to bring in interesting stories, scientific stories but not boring stories from the natural ecosystem. I think a set of two or three videos are out, you can check them out. So these videos for example are on Parthenium. Eucalyptus, Lantana, plants that have come from outside India and have become a very important part of our ecosystem now but there's a lot of story and history behind them. So these basics I actually picked up because of my education but now what I do when I make content for example it involves a lot of technical information on how to use a camera, how to set up a light, uh, how to edit a video, what kind of music would go on. So these were soft skills which were, def which were definitely not part of my education but I think the education sets foundation but along with this you have to also pick up other kind of skills these days to define your career ahead. In I don't know how to put this best in words but Whenever you get an opportunity, I would say, if there are teenagers listening to me out there, whatever opportunity you get to learn something, do not miss on that opportunity. You don't know when you can actually use it in your life in future. On that note, take care. Thank you so much for watching. And do let me know if you have more questions. We'll try to do a similar video again very soon.